Welcome to the Beyond 20 Sharewell tutorial series. In this video, we will demonstrate how to create and use the new One Step Action Blocks released in Sharewell Service Management version 10.1. Our demonstration will also introduce the process of using a parameterized email template, which can be reused in One Steps for different business objects, allowing for a single organizational branded email template available to all users of the Sharewell management system, regardless of which business object their One Steps are associated with. Action blocks allow you to build sets of actions that can be reused as One Step actions across all objects. They are created and edited using the Action Block Manager, which is very similar to the One Step Manager. Let's begin by examining the new One Step Action Block in Sharewell Service Management. Action blocks can be created either in the administrator console or the desktop client. In the desktop client, open the Action Block Manager from the One Step menu. You'll notice one significant difference is that there are no associations for action blocks. If you're in the rich client or the desktop client, they will all be created in the global folder. You can create other folders to organize those action blocks. However, they are not organized by association unless you create a folder for each association that you would want to restrict them to. Action blocks, when you create them, you can hit plus to click the plus sign to add a new one, the pencil sign to edit the current one that you have highlighted, or the X to delete it. Let's go ahead and examine our parameterized email template. Now the action block editor looks almost identical to the one step editor. However, it does have one significant difference and that is that it introduces the parameters feature and parameters are simply variables which can be passed from the calling one step to the action block and from the action block back to the one calling one step. So any data that you add to the parameter when you call the action block will be passed in. Any time you change one of these parameters values in the actions that you have in your action block, it will be passed back as a variable to the calling one step. And again, these are memory variables. Now there's a significant benefit to using memory variables when sending email from different business objects. We used to be able to do this using user-specific stored values. However, user-specific stored values do have a significant drawback when they are run from an automated process because all automated processes are run from the same user account ShareWell service services. So if you had the event where multiple automated processes were running on different records at the same time, then you would run the risk of having the wrong values placed in your email or in your one step. By using parameters for the action block, these variables are going to be unique every single time. So you could have dozens or hundreds of automated processes firing at the same time, for different objects, and they would all have a unique set of values sent in the email. So these are the parameters that we have set for our parameterized email. Let's look at them carefully. We have a title, a mail subject that are, that are both required. The intro is not required, as are the body heading and body text. Uh, we have three different body headings and three different body text blocks. We have a footer heading and a footer text. And then we have a variable called use portal links. And what we're setting that as required, however, in this case, we've decided we're going to end up making it not required. So now let's look at the email itself. So we just have one single action in this action block. We can have multiple, just like you do in any one step. And what we've done is we've used a combination of stored values, stored expressions, parameters, and static content. Like we have a static image for our logo. We have some static comment down in the body of the email. So the first thing we'll look at is our from 
is using a stored expression called the system state email ac account. That tells us which account we want to use based on our current system. Just look at that very briefly. If our current system is production, we're going to use our production email sender. Otherwise, we're going to use our dev email sender in this case. Now, we use a case statement there because there are clients out there who use both a dev system and a test system in addition to their production system. We even have some clients that have sandboxes that use email. And so the sandboxes would again have their own email sender. And then each of these cases would use a different stored value for the uh, account to use as the email sender. In our two, which is our recipients, we have a, another stored expression. Now we could have used a custom expression here if we wanted to use a parameter for our recipients. In this case, we're using a stored expression. Uh, therefore, we had to use a stored value over in the calling one step. So we'll cover that later. Basically, the properties are very similar. In this case, we're using the new system function called is environment production, is environment test, and then the, the other one would have been is environment dev. We only need to worry about is it production or test. If it's not either one of those, obviously it's either dev or the sandbox. Now, if we were on a system that used sandboxes for the email, we could have used the production the test and the dev cases and then our default would have been our sandbox and again in this case because it's a stored expression we have to use stored values if we had used a custom expression we could have used a parameter for the recipients uh, we would still use the stored values that are constant though so the stored value of the current system qa email recipient and the current system dev email recipient would still be stored values but the variable could have been right here had we used a custom expression rather than a stored expression. Now we come to our first parameter variable that we used, and that's our email subject. So our mail subject, again, was a parameter that will be passed in. Our email brand here is a stored value. It's a constant stored value, and that goes for our email branding. So in our, you'll notice that when we show it to you, the title is one of our parameters. And again, by doing this, we're able to highlight the variables that we place here. And then we can go to our fonts and we set the uh, font size, the bolding and the color. So we can format each one of these different text blocks using the text formatters in our rich text editor here. Also, we've uh, used our color background for our table and the cell alignment, all of those different items that have been covered in other videos by Beyond 20 on how to create emails. In this case, we're just telling you use these parameter memory variables, and we'll show you how you just select them right here. So let's say that we want to um, change this. So we'll just delete the variable that was there. We'll come down here and we'll grab and there you have all of the variables that are the parameters for this action block. And we'll go ahead and place the uh, mail intro right there. And then let's just change the text type. Let's make it 14 point. And let's make it italic. Okay. We then have three text block blocks in our body. We have some expressions down below. Now these are stored expressions and those are necessary because they use hyperlinks and hyperlinks in email must be placed as expressions. If you put the same data into a stored value that you put into the expression, it will not render as a hyperlink in the email body itself. Down below, we have some constant content here. Basically, our signature tag. And then we have our footer heading and our footer text. Now, we could have, if we wanted to make a customized signature here, we could have put another variable in here. So we could add a parameter. And let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back over to the parameter list. 
and then notice that the parameters are listed here just like stored values and variables are we're going to with one exception there's no case expressions for these variables so they are always either required or not required and they can have a default value so let's add a new parameter and we'll call it signature the data type will be text let's make it required and then let's go place the signature name into our email body right above our corporate signature base All right, so that's how you edit the email template using your variables, your stored expressions, your constant data, and stored values. Now that we've edited that, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And we already have one set up for problems, so let's go look at our problem. So let's show you how we're going to call that. So this is called Notify Reporter. It's not a problem. We're going to edit that. And we have a couple of uh, stored values we needed. We're going to need the recipients, and we have a another stored value that we needed to set to false for the customer portal because we're not going to use that on this email block. Then we go to run our action block, and notice that when we added the action block, it's right in this area right here. So instead of run another one step, we added run an action block. And notice it has its own little block icon in it, little watermark of a, a block, a building block. So now that we've thrown that on there and we've selected the parameterized email, and you do that using the ellipsis. Now we've got to set our parameters, and we've already set all of the other parameters that were in there, but remember we just added one for the signature. So we need to add our signature. So how would we do that? Let's set it right here. And because we're going to run this manually, let's run it using the system function. I'm going to use the current system function, which is my current user email. So we have that set. Let's go ahead and let's run this and see what it looks like. So it first prompts us to see why we're saying that it's closed. And there we have our entire email ready to go. So we have all of our variables that we set have been entered into our email template. Uh, down here we have our and again, I put my email. I could have put my email and my name if I wanted to. All of the data that we input into our stored variables and our parameters have been placed into our email template. They're in a formatted the same way we wanted them. So we have our headings formatted in bold, our content or our text not is not formatted in bold. Our title section is in bold italic. And then we could send this. I hope this video has been informative for you. Please subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on Sharewell, ITIL, and other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20. Or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as sharewell development and administration.